One of the truly great mysteries in all of comic books, and I don't think we'll ever get this truly answered, is how does Tom King keep getting work, especially from DC Comics? He's destroyed characters. He has actually burned bridges with peers at DC Comics. He's dropped sales on their number one comic book, yet the man gets opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, always with an A-level artist. It just it makes no sense. They even try to get him a writing gig on a movie. Fortunately, he was teamed up with Ava DuMarnay on there, and you know that thing wasn't going to go anywhere. But Tom King appears to have like some type of uh, a horseshoe shoved up his ass. I'm not really sure. Maybe he has a lifetime contract with DC Comics. I do know at one point his mother, who I believe is no longer with us, I believe it's his late mother, was an executive at Warner Brothers, I think for, for quite a while. Perhaps it's connections that way that have kept him in this position for so long. But DC Comics... No, it doesn't matter the regime. They are going to keep giving you Tom King, even though it kind of felt like maybe he was drifting off there for a minute. He was getting lower and lower profile characters and projects. Maybe the sales are just that good. I don't know. Well, I do know that he sells a lot better than a lot of other comic writers. Not as good as Scott Snyder. But, uh, hey, Scott Snyder ain't in the building, so I guess you got to take Tom King. We're getting more Tom King, and we have more proof this week why they should just cut bait. My goodness, we got a bad Tom King comic. We're going to start with the news, some Superman news with Tom King first. Then I'm going to tell you just how bad Killing Time got after a phenomenal borderline five-star debut just a few weeks ago. Let's get to the news first. DC is paying tribute to the fallen Justice League while also debuting a Robin-styled Superboy in an upcoming Dark Crisis Worlds Without a League. Superman number one, one shot from Tom King and Chris Burnham. The one shot follows the events of Joshua Williamson and Rafa Sandoval's Justice League 75, which releases on April 26th. This is kind of tragic. We've all been asking for John Kent to be the age, and they're finally going to do it with Tom King of all people. And not only that, what's what's the obsession with making everything Batman related? We've got Batman taking over the Fortress of Solitude. Apparently, they're dressing up Clark Kent's son as Robin now. I imagine in the not too distant future, we're going to have Bruce Wayne knocking boots with Lois Lane and all that stuff. Although, yes, I know that it has happened in comic books, but it's not really part of canon like it's going to be. If DC Comics has their way, I'm reminded of a story when I had Chuck Dixon on the channel. Very nice man. If you haven't heard that conversation, definitely go check it out after this. He talked about when he was the Batman writer, the group editors got together, and the plan for Superman for one year was that he was going to get amnesia and think that he was Batman. So this isn't a new problem, but everything that belongs to every other character will eventually become Batman-related, because that's the only character they care about. They certainly don't care about Superman putting Tom King on a title like this. I don't understand why he's on a Dark Crisis thing. Tom King almost never does anything event-related. Hey, we're getting the DH John Kent. Just not the way we wanted it. The main cover art for Dark Crisis Worlds Without a League Superman number one shows Clark Kent standing next to his son, who is dressed in a Robin-inspired Superboy outfit, while bullets casually bounce off the two of them. This is what Tom King had to say. Superman is maybe my favorite character to write, and Chris is one of my favorite artists in comics, whom I've been dying to work with for years. So this project is an absolute joy. It's an important and emotional story about what Clark missed, what he missed John's teenage years, the pain and glory of seeing your boy grow up. Well, I think we've all been longing for that story. I just never, ever in my lifetime wanted it to be written by Tom King. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. I think we all feel the same way. Now, I have heard Tom King's Up in the Sky, which was released in those Walmart 100-page giant exclusive comics. There was a story from Tom King in the Superman one, and there was a Brian Michael Bendis story in the Batman one. I've heard that Superman story is really good. I've never heard that Superman is Tom King's favorite character. I find that hard to believe. Tom King writes the most depressed, lame-ass, loser heroes in all of comic books. Clark Kent Superman is none of that. It doesn't make sense to me whatsoever. I think he may be talking out of his asshole, but he did get the big Superman writing gig tying this into Dark Crisis. Based on what other people have said about Up in the Sky and Tom King's work on it, this might be good, but this is not a comic book I, I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the day that Tom King gets the old pink slip. What do they say in, in WWE when you get fired? Best of luck in your future endeavors. I want to make my very own best of luck in your future endeavors, sir, video 
serenading Tom King, letting him know that I'm going to support him when everything he does, he just won't be doing it for DC Comics anymore. As a DC fan, I have to be honest about this stuff, and I cannot wait for the man to leave. But we do have more information about the story. The synopsis reads, when Pariah and his forces of the great darkness laid waste to the most powerful superheroes of all time, all hope was lost. With the Man of Steel suffering the same fate as that of his comrades, join us for a look at a world of dreams he would never have thought possible when alive. Where there's life, there's hope. And with that hope comes a deeper unraveling of the tapestry of DC Universe's biggest event of 2022. I find that when there's life, there's hope lied a little bit odd considering the synopsis itself. It sounds like all this will be some type of a dream state, perhaps, of Superman as he's dead and he's in purgatory and everyone's going to think he's dead. Or perhaps he's dead and he's going to the gates of heaven and this is what he's dreaming about, all the moments he missed with his son, which are absolutely taken away from us, not by Tom Keith, by Brian Michael Bettis, another terrible idea that they did with Superman. I don't know why Superman has become the whipping boy of DC Comics. Well, I kind of know. But they initially gave the character to Brian Michael Bendis, who destroyed everything that Peter J. Tomasi, Dan Jurgens, and Patrick Gleason had done with Clark and John Kent and their relationship and all that good stuff. Then they gave John Kent to Tom Taylor. We know how that's turned out. Nobody even cares about the character anymore. Now we got Mark Russell on a Superman book, and we've got Tom King writing a Superman special. What did Clark Kent ever do to Jim Lee? I would say Jim Lee wouldn't do this to Batman. But we do have a Batman comic from Tom King coming out this week, and it wasn't very good. Batman Killing Time number one was spectacular. The art was great. The story was really good. It was jumping around time, but it made sense within the narrative about the heist that was going on, and it kind of made it cool. Unfortunately, this comic lost all steam in issue number two. He didn't even kill a character, and he still ruined the series. That's what type of funk Tom King is in. Batman Killing Time number two is absolute disaster. I'm not going to do a full review because I don't have the time here. We've already covered the Superman stuff, but I will give you some key pointers and reasons why this is a pile of shit. Let's get to it. Tom King has long thought himself to be the Quentin Tarantino of comic books, thinking he's writing witty dialogue and trying to tell stories out of order. It worked in the last issue when they were doing the heist, when they were kind of showing them out of order and everything comes together. And it was like, yeah, this is really good. This is the best he's ever done it. Unfortunately, we are jumping through about 3,000 years worth of time here in this story. It is the most pretentious Tom King, Tom Jumping stuff that you'll ever read. The comic is completely nonsensical, and it makes the reading experience just awful. Even though there are some key points of the story that are interesting, the way that it is presented and the way that it reads is absolute garbage. I can't believe the editorial staff at DC Comics continues to let him do this nonlinear storytelling which almost always fails. It's only worked a couple of times. We also get some really, really, really stupid Tom King plot development here. It turns out that when Riddler killed Penguin, he actually was killing him with Morse code. Yes, he was jabbing him harder and less harder with the Penguin's umbrella to deliver a message on a secret house that they should go to. This is nonsensical. It's stupid, and it does not play out nearly as cool as I imagine Tom King in his head thought it would, I was rolling my eyes, and I can't imagine many other DC readers, when they got to this page, weren't going, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me, Tom King? Again, Tom King? I'm laying all this on Ben Abernathy, who was recently promoted to DC Comics. You need to ring this motherfucker in, because he's destroying his own reputation and his own stories, because this was dookie. We also got another Tom King calling card in this, and it's bad characterization, we get to see the Catwoman, and of course she's badass. She's always badass in a Tom King comic book. But here, she might be a little too violent for the Catwoman character. I understand this is supposed to be Elseworlds, but she actually does not uh, crack a lot of necks with that whip. She's actually not really a murderer. That's why she's one of those characters that can straddle the line between hero and villain. Yes, she does villainous acts. She's a burglar and all that stuff, but she's not a murderer. But in Tom King's comic book, because he refuses to adhere to DC's characters, She's snapping next year. We also got another weird moment. We've been getting this a lot in Batman Catwoman, where we have like Catwoman and Joker flirting. These two characters certainly come in contact with each other and they certainly help each other from time to time. But you never ever got the feeling that they were pals or confidants. That's certainly what's being implied here. And um, like I said, Tom King makes it admission in every single comic book he writes. 
to fuck up the characters, and he's certainly doing it here. Although we've seen this in Batman and Catwoman, it doesn't work there, and it certainly doesn't work here. We also got more time jumps back to like Greek mythology and whatnot. Uh, these are pretty off-putting and annoying. They don't need to be in here. I bet there's going to be a clever way that it plays into the story, and it won't be worth it in the end, and these will all be wasted pages of David Marquez, who could have been doing really cool Batman art. But it's a Tom King comic, so you're going to get some crap like this. Why DC Comics refuses to say bye-bye to Tom King and say, you know what, maybe it's time for you to go back to Marvel, or maybe it's time for you to go to the indie scene and see what you can do, or maybe you should just go be a screenwriter, see what you could do there. He's old, he's stale. Everything that he does in DC Comics right now is pretty predictable. He's got so many pretentious writing tropes. We're still getting poetry and lyrics and time jumping and all the crappy Tom King stuff. He's still wrecking the characterization. It's just time for him to go. At this point, it would be better for everyone involved, for DC Comics, for Tom King, certainly for us, the fans. Perhaps you don't agree with me, or maybe you think maybe it's time for Tom King to get another shot. I do want to take you back to July of 2020 and a little reminder just who Tom King is, not only as a writer, but as a peer, as somebody that you work with. What he did to Jay Lee was absolutely unconscionable. He went out there and decided to, to assassinate the character of a real-life person and a colleague at DC Comics. If you haven't seen the fallout and the way that Jay Lee was mistreated so badly by so many people in the comic book industry being led by Tom King, definitely check this out and definitely have an insight into who Tom King really is.